Hey guys, this is our first on the channel. We are finally checking out an older laptop to see what it's like for retro PC gaming. This laptop is from Targa. It is the Visionary XP and a donation to the channel by Dominic. Thank you very much. And the goal is to test this laptop with Windows XP, Windows 98, as well as seeing if we can get MS-DOS to run as well. Looking at all the ports, this is quite different to modern laptops. We have so many ports. At the front, infrared, we have headphone and microphone. There are CD, audio controls and a volume dial. On the left side, we have some cooling vents, a connector for the power supply. We have fast ethernet with 100 megabits per second, firewire and also a type two PC card. And on the right side, we have storage for a two and a half inch IDE hard drive. There's a DVD drive, a PS2 port, a good old dial up modem and a S video as well as composite output as well as a Kensington lock. And at the back, we have a VGA output. This is what I'm using for capturing. There is a battery and it's still holding a little bit of a charge parallel port as well as two USB 2 ports. I found a data sheet online, the Targa Visionary XP. Let's have a closer look. AMD Athlon XP, that is awesome, with a wire chipset, with a 15 inch monitor, 1024 by 768, with a four by three ratio, so perfect for retro gaming, but the quality of the display is not that great. In terms of RAM, we can go up to two gigabytes. The machine has 512, already configured. And look at that, I was a little bit worried about the video card, but this one has an ATI Radeon 9000. So I'm really hoping we can use that one under Windows 98. The hard drive was removed, so we will be using ID to modern flash storage adapters. We have a 16-bit sound card. Hopefully we can use this under MS-DOS, we will see. And here are some of the other specifications. On this document, we can see a web address here. And if I go to the properties of the document, I can see a date. It's dated uh, 2002 and 2003. Here we are on the Wayback machine. I entered the website and we got a few hits from the year 2004, five and six. But after that, the website seems to have gone dark. And yeah, look at that. We have some resources, but I didn't have much luck with downloading. So if we click on BIOS, there is a BIOS download for our machine, Tiger Visionary XP-3. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between dash three. Does that mean there were two other versions? I'm not sure. And when trying to download this file, uh, it just doesn't work. So I had a look under drivers and again, not too much success. So if we go down, we've got the Targa Visionary XP. There's a driver for the video card. Again, the link didn't work and I'm not seeing chipset drivers and sound card drivers, but yeah, we will get to Windows 98 very soon. And I have my own little methods of finding drivers for old computers. Turning on the machine, it works out of the box. I got a little error message to do with the CMOS settings, but that's to expect it. The BIOS has quite a few options. You can even disable some onboard resources like serial and parallel. I like doing that. So the next point is installing storage. I'm using a adapter from the 44 pin ID connector for two and a half inch drives to modern MSATA. And for MSATA, I'm using a SanDisk 128 gigabyte. And we are starting to install Windows XP because there is software that can automatically find all the drivers. And at first, everything looks good. We are booting from a optical CD. So this machine, it didn't boot from USB. So we're booting from the optical disk drive. And I was able to delete the partition on the uh, storage device and then install Windows XP. But after a while, we are getting an error. 
So I tried a few things, a different installation disk, but that also didn't work. Then I tried another adapter, different model, also converting MSATA to ID with a different MSATA SSD, but this one also didn't work. So at this point, I really wanted to see some progress. So rather than digging deeper, let's move on to Windows 98, because in my opinion, if we can get this machine to work under Windows 98, that would be a much better outcome. Windows XP runs on all sorts of devices, and I think for Windows XP retro gaming, this machine might be a little bit underpowered anyway. So I have installed different storage. We're using an ID to SD card adapter, and look at that, everything is working fine. I'm booting from the CD, I'm uh, partitioning and formatting the drive, and then I'm copying the Windows 98 files over, running the installation, and everything seems to be working just fine. Here we are on the desktop, ready to install some drivers. Thank you, Vaya, for still hosting the drivers. If you work for Vaya, thank you so much for contributing to the retro PC community. Many manufacturers have already pulled the drivers, and I'm afraid it's just a matter of time that Vaya will do the same thing. So you go to the website, select Windows 98, and then you can get the chipset drivers from here. And the other drivers that are important are the audio drivers. There are a couple of products to choose from, so I downloaded a few versions and I'm pretty sure one of them will work. I didn't investigate for Ethernet and the USB 2 port. It's not a huge deal for this project at the moment. Now for the graphics drivers, I found the ATI Omega drivers version 2637 from the Vogons driver library. They're awesome. And these are compatible with Windows 98 and they also work with the mobility versions of the ATI Radeon. The driver's installed fine. We have working 3D graphics and the driver has heaps of options in the control panel for anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering, as well as VSync control, and also the sound is working. So let's test a few games. GL Quick at 1024 by 768. Look at that, 234.4 FPS. That is awesome. So this laptop is a high performance machine under Windows 98. This is expendable, also at 1024 by 768, 131.8 FPS, and another game, Draken, we're getting 105.4 FPS at 1024 by 768. I put together some charts. Here we can see the resolution scaling under GeoQuake. For some reason, the two higher resolutions wouldn't run on this machine. Maybe an issue with the driver version. Here we have expendable. We can see how the machine is sort of limited at the lower resolution, but then as we crank up to 1600 by 1200, the video card gets stressed a little bit more, but we're still getting 98 FPS, which is awesome. And here we have Draycon, look at that, 77.5 FPS at 1600 by 1200, that is stunning. Because this is a mobile CPU, we can manipulate the multiplier in Windows and maybe later even under DOS. So you can see here me on the screen playing around with the multiplier. Some games might be speed sensitive, so this is definitely nice to see. And now let's restart into DOS and see what this machine can do. I have some updates to our DOS benchmark pack. I got an email from Jan. He is behind the Czech CPU utility. He released a new version, so I have included that into the latest DOS benchmark pack. And from Vogons member THP, who is from Austria, Vienna, how awesome. He wrote a little utility that calculates the FPS result when running the Doom benchmark, so we don't have to manually convert it anymore. In the PC Player benchmark, 451 FPS, Doom achieves almost 107 FPS, and Quake, wow, almost 300 FPS. So DOS performance is outstanding. Again, because this is a mobile processor, we can use software to lower the multiplier. This is setmal, and I'm setting the multiplier to 3x. So the processor runs now at 400 megahertz, and 
the PC player benchmark is now a little bit slower, running at 162.9 FPS. We can slow down the machine even further by disabling the CPU cache, again using set mal, and now we're getting a PC player benchmark score of 4.8, and a little bit more relatable is 3D bench result of 16.2, so that is a perfect 386 running at 40 megahertz. Many speed sensitive games will now run on this machine. For DOS gaming, many old games will not run good on this machine because we have too much RAM, but we have enough performance for late era DOS games, especially if you wanna play at higher resolutions. I did have an issue with the PC speaker. For some reason, it was muted under DOS. So when turning on the laptop, I would hear the post beep coming out from the headphone socket or from the uh, integrated speakers, but under DOS, for whatever reason, the PC speaker is muted. So how can we get sound under DOS? One option is using a parallel port device. This is the Opel 3 LPT from Sodaco out of Belgium. He specializes on all sorts of retro audio related gadgets and yeah, you plug it in, run a driver and off you go, you get amazing FM synthesis quality in a range of DOS games. And another option is using the Sound Blaster emulation project. So this is a project from Crazy, I believe is his username, and it supports a quite wide range of integrated audio solutions. And look at that, it is supported by this laptop. For this project, I tested a few games. Let's check them out. In the background, you can see them running. And yeah, thanks to this project, you can really breathe in some retro life into old computers like this one. And I do plan on checking out this project in more detail, digging a little bit deeper. Maybe, it, maybe we just stay with this laptop because now it's already on my test bench and I have all the software up and running. So all in all under DOS, the performance is outstanding for fast, high resolution 3D games. This machine has enough power. We can slow it down, disabling the CPU cache and lowering the multiplier, but then we might run into some issues with the audio emulation. So it's a bit of a trade-off and also we have a lot of RAM. So this will never be as flexible as a real desktop 386 with an ISA sound card. But look, it's better than getting punched in the face. We can run a heap of DOS games perfectly fine on this machine. And this is one of those situations where uh, you should be focusing on the games that do work rather than uh, stress too much about those few games that have issues. So guys, what is my take on using a laptop like this one for retro PC gaming? Well, there is a lot to like. So for starters, you get everything. One machine, it has everything integrated. The only thing I had to supply was the storage, whereas finding a, a desktop computer with all the accessories that can be a lot more difficult. Now, Windows XP, yeah, I couldn't get it to run, but after seeing the success with Windows 98 and MS-DOS, yeah, it's, not a, it's really not a big loss. There are better machines out there for Windows XP. And if I have to make a guess, what is the reason? I, I'm picking those uh, converter bridges, converting between IDE and MSATA, I believe there is some compatibility issue going on there. Unfortunately, StarTech, I don't think they do uh, a nice converter chip for laptops at this point in time with the chip for Marvel, which is more compatible. Windows 98 performance and compatibility is amazing. We're getting Radeon graphics, awesome drivers. We're getting access to driver settings for the resolutions, anti-aliasing, and isotropic filtering, vsync control, so there is a lot to like. And you can play with the integrated screen, 
at 1024 by 768 you will get awesome fps you get a nice 4 by 3 aspect ratio the motion blur is definitely there so yeah if you want to use a CRT monitor or an lcd screen plug in the external vga port and off you go dos performance is also outstanding so this machine will excel at 3d games that need a beefy processor to run at higher resolutions this is where this machine will shine and even with the audio side of things yeah we got things to work by either buying a parallel port device or by using SBEMU which is a really cool project and definitely something I do want to check out in a future video so all in all I was really impressed with how many retro PC games we can play on such a machine. So again, Dominic, thank you for sending this laptop to the channel. Greatly appreciate it. And now I wanna hear from you guys. What is your take on using old laptops for retro PC gaming? So this is my first time checking one out and I'm positively impressed. You get a lot of specifications for, yeah, maybe even a good price. I haven't checked pricing at the moment but i yeah i assume or I'm, I'm i'm thinking that you can get an old laptop for a better price compared to a desktop computer and then having to buy all the accessories on top of it but i could be wrong so please share your opinion and yeah guys that's it for this one thank you so much for watching and i shall see you soon with another one